Are you conscious of the age of the material that you're working with? Uh, yeah, it's, it's always something that I like to keep in mind, just to make it a bit more bearable when you're digging. <laughs> because it can get quite tedious at times. Sure. But when you realize that what you're digging up is, well, here we're looking at about 60,000 years old, and that humans left this here, like the last thing that happened here was 60,000 years ago, someone, someone made a fire and cooked their food, then it becomes a bit more exciting. Everything on site is shot in three dimensions with these total stations, and those total stations will measure the three-dimensional coordinates something to a millimeter, um, which means that everything we take away from site, we can rebuild it in a three-dimensional computer program and see exactly where it came from. We've pioneered many of the techniques that we use here, so people come from all over the world to, to learn those techniques. So we have, we have students here from Wyoming and Australia and Texas and uh, the UK who come to work here just to, just to learn the technique and to, and to work on, on our sites. So uh, we, you can see we have four total stations in operation. Um, so we have four gunners uh, and you can see they're constantly working. Um, we have excavators. Those are the people actually in the sediments, carefully removing the sediments. And what they do is they call in a shot from the total station. So if they find a little piece of shellfish, or a stone artifact, and the gunner uh, targets the laser on the, on the piece and they hit it, and uh, they have the barcode scanners over there which send the uh, uh, specimen number to the handheld computer yes. you can see that uh, she's got and she's obviously toggling on, and that connects the three-dimensional coordinate to the specimen number. So everything is beautifully controlled. Uh, this is our neural network down here uh, where we have the computers, all the uh, uh, paperwork is taken care of. Everything goes on tablet computers. So we have people walking around site with these tablet computers with drop-down menus and all of the forms are now actually uh, on those on those computers which saves us a lot of time and increases um, the accuracy. And the people who do all that record keeping are called the recorders. So for example Jane uh, in the white helmet there. Jane is a postdoc of mine at ASU. She's originally from U University of Toronto just um, finished her PhD and in fact published a very high profile paper uh, based on her work up in Katu Pan, also in South Africa. It was published in Science back in uh, November. And then we have the site techs, Jamie in the purple helmet and Ben in the blue helmet over there. So they're on the computers um, acquiring the data and they're double checking it, making sure mistakes haven't been made and everything is, is accurate. So when we walk away from the site at the end of the day, we have a totally clean database that we're we're happy with. And then of course we have uh, the excavators. So um, I have a local team, uh, Luando, Dix, and Strun are all local Mazel Bay people um, that have been working for me, some of them for a decade, uh, and Strun more recently. Um, and then there's there's others, uh, Tina and Cindy also. Cindy's offsite, but Tina's up there somewhere. And then we have a selection of students from South Africa, Australia, the United States, um, working the guns and doing the excavations. Those two black lines, those are hearths. And they date to about 86,000 years ago. And what you can see, there's a, a hearth, and then there's that yellow sediment. That's a sterile <laughs> sediment, so they built a hearth, and then the sediment came down on top of it. They came back in and built another hearth, and that pattern goes on up through the site. Hearth, sediment, hearth, 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 sediment in between. We use a technique called optically stimulated luminescence, and it measures uh, the last time the sand grain was exposed to light. So at, at 90,000 years ago, it has an error of about 3,000. We'll take the sediment and jacket it with plaster of Paris, and then we impregnate it with resin, and it gets cut by a diamond slaw, and we grind it down to 30 microns so that we can see it under a microscope. And you can see the original hearth structure. So uh, you can tell whether a hearth was stepped on or not. So imagine, let's say you build a little fire in the sand, right? You have your layer of ash, you have your layer of charcoal. If you freeze that, 
it has a certain structure. But if you step on it, you destroy the structure, right? We can tell whether or not those hards have been stepped on or not. Mo many of our hearths are not stepped on, which means that people came in, built one hearth, and left. Otherwise, they'd be stepped on. So, right, imagine a camp. People are wan wandering all over the place, stepping on the hearths. But these are very short occupations. And what we see is, is when we get up to uh, that level, we see the, the occupation intensity of the site change completely. No longer is it these short visits. It, people are here for prolonged periods. We get solid ash. And that's also where we find that the earliest microliths. When we see this technological change, the introduction of those little backed pieces that were used for projectiles, suddenly they're living in, on the site really intensively. So there's a technological change and an occupational change. We have yet to find human remains here. It's, it, it's strange, but it's not unusual. Okay, so South African cave sites um, don't have a lot of fossil human material in them, which would suggest that they're burying them out, outside. So for example, Neanderthals tended to bury their dead in the caves. So we have whole skeletons of Neanderthals beautifully preserved where they were interred. Um, but People didn't seem to be doing that here. It's a cultural thing. From the very base, it's 90,000 years ago, to the very, very top, it's 50. 40,000 years of occupation. So notice how the layers are, are horizontal. So, so they go like this, right? All the way up, right up there, they're horizontal. And they once came all the way through here. And you can see remnants plastered against the wall, right there. This wall that you see here is a natural cliff wall. We didn't excavate that. Rather, what we did, there was a dune that was draping over it. We pulled the dune back, and it was abutting that cliff wall. So this is a this is a natural erosion cliff, and the only thing we've excavated is this block down through it. And that's the case all the way up. So at one point, those sediments came around here, they were undercut and big chunks fell off. You don't get a flat surface like that except with a catastrophic detachment. So think kind of, you ever seen pictures of the glacial pieces falling off? So it's probably undercut by high sea levels where chunks are falling off and it's eating the site away in that direction. But luckily for us, it stopped. We've been working this site, excavating here for about eight years. Um, and we might have even more to go. Um, and to give you an idea, we, I mean, there are 14 vertical meters of sediment with human occupation. There's no site like that. When we first realized it was an archaeological site, there was a heavy rain that exposed some of the layers right here, and you could see about two meters. When we started then, we had no idea it was going to be like this. I reckoned two years, three years of excavation, and it just goes on and on.